Hello, welcome back. Today we're watching the Star Trek original series season two episode called um, Wolf in the Fold. The only thing this title makes me think of is like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Somebody who is malicious in a group of people who you wouldn't expect to be a danger. Let's see how close I am to being correct. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Thanks for watching. Already we're starting out with some exotic belly dancing, it looks like. Love the tinsel. Is that what you call it? Captain, I think I'm gonna like Argelius. <laughs> Obviously a man of good taste. Man of good taste. The Argelians think very highly of their pleasure. And this is a completely hedonistic society. You like her, Scotty? I... I've invited her to join us at the table. Oh. I thought you might like to meet her. She's very talented. I would fall over. <laughs> Scotty, in Argelia, they use the lights. Now, no one has to tell an old Aberdeen pub crowner how to applaud, Captain. <laughs> I've never seen anybody applaud quite like that. I doubt if anyone has ever told you of the marvelous fogs we have in Aberdeen. Never a word. Well, then why don't I show you? You don't mind, do you? We won't leave without you, Scotty. Relax and enjoy yourself. This is prescription stuff. Don't forget, the explosion that threw Scotty against the bulkhead was caused by a woman. Considerable psychological damage could have been caused. Uh, for example, his total resentment toward women. I know a little place across town where the women... Oh, yes, I know the place. I know the place. Let's go. So, Scotty, something went wrong. Scotty was injured, and uh, one of the crew who was a, a woman caused the accident, and they think he will resent women for that? Whoa, that is some intense fog. Of course, we can't just have a nice, pleasant evening. Uh-oh. Is that our friend? She's dead, Jim. Stabbed. A dozen times. Uh -huh. Um... What? A dozen times? That's a lot. Scotty holding the bloody murder weapon. Bit suspicious. Wolf in the fold. Well, that one man was looking very suspicious. The one that they kept showing. The chief city administrator has taken charge of the investigation, but has learned little of value. This is my home planet, Rigel 4. I'd have a dozen investigators working on the matter. But they don't exist here. Uh, Mr. Scott? Now, uh, are you sure you've never seen this before? I... I don't remember. We were... walking in. The fog. Seems quite shocked. I heard the girl scream. I don't remember another thing. A psychological block? You don't think by any chance that Scotty it doesn't make any difference what I think. But you don't just throw him to the wolves. Bones, this happened under Argelian jurisdiction. If they want to arrest him, try him, even convict him. But he's suffering from a severe concussion. A concussion? Mr. Hengus, there were other people in the cafe. Uh, so I've been informed by the staff. Uh, they're being located and we will question them. What is the law in these cases? The law of Argelius is love. What? Love is great and all, but I'm not sure I'm understanding. And this is my wife. I love her Seymour. outfit. Gentlemen, before our great awakening 200 years ago, we had ways of learning the truth in such matters. We shall return to them. The Argelian empathic contact? I assumed it was a lost art. Gentlemen, I have come to invite you to my home. Uh, Prefect, uh, don't you think this should be handled in an official no, manner love. Uh, to my office? It shall be handled in an official manner, Mr. Hengist, since I am the highest official. He's like, why the fuck did you hire me then? <laughs> I can beam down a technician with a psycho tricorder. It will give us a detailed account of everything that's happened to Mr. Scott in the last 24 hours. Oh, I'd advise against it, Prefect. Very well, Captain. The psycho tricorder will require privacy in order to be effective. Mm. There is a small chamber below this room. 
I have already heard talk of closing Argelius to space vehicles. Well, that would be most unfortunate. That's strategic importance as a spaceport. Yes, I believe it's the only one in the quadrant. I feel like that's important somehow. Only one in the quadrant. Lieutenant Karen Tracy reporting as ordered, Captain. Lieutenant, I want a 24-hour aggressive memory check made on Mr. Scott. They can do that? Scotty, cooperate completely with Lieutenant Tracy. Maybe we can clear this thing up. I certainly hope so, sir. I can't stand this not knowing. He's questioning whether he did it or not because he doesn't remember. That blow on the head. It could put all his previous behavior patterns into the junk heap. Oh, he, had, he got the concussion. Okay. When a man feels guilty about something, something too terrible to remember, he blots it out of his conscious memory. So he got concussed during that accident, like, prior to this. Are you ready, Siva? I am ready. May I have the knife, please? Knife? Certainly. Oh, the murder weapon? Sibo has the ability to receive impressions from inanimate objects. Do you have it, Captain? No. But I put it here when we arrived. It's gone. Oh, Scott. my lord. She's dead, Jim. Stabbed. Over and over again. Somebody doesn't want his memories being brought to the surface. Uh, Lieutenant. Poor Scotty. He's really Captain. going through it right now. Where's Lieutenant Tracy is dead, Scott? Dead? But uh, what happened down there? She was taking the readings. And now I'm sitting here. I tell you, I don't remember. I must have passed out. Think, Scotty. I've been trying. I can't even believe this is really happening. Oh, poor Scotty. The acting is so good. The, like, distress, the panic. This guy is suspicious. Uh, Prefect, uh, both of these men were at the cafe the night of the murder. There's been another murder, Hengist. Why, that, that's terrible. I mean, my men picked you up near here. What were you doing? Oh, please, I know nothing about it. I didn't kill anyone. You. You were a musician at the cafe. Since she was a little girl, she danced for me. She was my daughter. <laughs> and you. That look. Did you know, Kara? Of course he knew her. They were to be married. He was jealous of her. Hmm. I loved her. And when she went over to the table with these men, I just could not stand to watch, so I left. I went home. Jealousy has often been a motive for murder. That is why the emotion is so strongly disapproved of here. Well, you can't really control emotions. Uh, Captain, uh, may I continue with the questions, please? Well, get on with it, man. Just don't stand there. You are behaving very much like a man who is desperately trying anything to save his friend. Uh, yeah? Well, of course I'm trying to save my friend. In both cases, your friend Scott was discovered over the body. I am ready, Jarvis. On one condition, that the room be sealed so that no one can leave or enter while the ceremony is going on. The room is sealed. Okay. Do you mean my neck is going to have to depend on some spooky mumbo-jumbo? <laughs> that is, uh, that is a fear. Yes, Mr. Spock. The Argelian empathic contact is an interesting phenomenon, but the technique is not sound enough to risk a man's life. We beam Mr. Scott on board the Enterprise and employ our computers to learn the truth. But there's nothing we can do about it. Kirk out. I mean, you say that, but then if they convict Scotty and say that he did it... There is something here. I thought she needed the knife. Something terrible. Fear. She's just making shit up. Anger, hatred. There is evil here. Monstrous, terrible evil. Hatred of women, a hunger that never dies, an ancient terror. Baradis Kessler, Richard, Richard! Um, yeah, I had a feeling that was coming. The room has been sealed, so it's somebody in this room. 
Scotty simply could not have done it. Normally, no. But that blow on his head oh, could... Oh, no, Captain. Scotty, I'm sorry. I'm perfectly satisfied Mr. Scott is guilty. But not responsible. That is unproven, sir. How could any man do such monstrous things? That's what we hope to find out, sir. Mm. I'm not good at these whodunits. By your own admission, you don't know whether you did or didn't. On the Enterprise, we can make a recording, and they will tell us what happened to him in the recent past. There would be no room for doubt. I knew Kirk would change his mind about their customs. Will your machines tell us this? No doubt will remain. No doubt. Very well. We will go to your ship. The ancient penalty for murder was death by slow torture. Do you understand that, Mr. Scott? Do we skip the torture I, part? I understand. It's got to be the... I just... Maybe it's the... um. The musician, because he seems the least likely. Each testifier will sit here, place his hand on this plate. This Any deviation from the facts or the proof will be immediately detected. Mr. Scott, would you take the stand? Scotty would never do it. He loves women. Subjects recently received severe blow on skull. Some peripheral abnormalities. Sufficient abnormalities to account for periods of functional amnesia. Negative. Unless Scott is lying about his loss of memory. I'm not lying, Captain. Because the real murderer has a way to erase his memory or to block his memory. I didn't black out when Mr. Jarrah's wife was killed. Why do they have a woman inside this room right now? That just doesn't seem like a good idea. I heard the poor lady scream and I was, I was near the head of the table anyway. I went toward her, but there was something in my way. You mean someone? No, Captain. Some... thing. What? It wasn't really there, if you know what I mean. No. Subject relaying accurate account. Scotty, lie to me. How old are you? Uh, uh 22, sir. Me too. Inaccurate. 22. Data in error. This guy's looking very nervous. But I remind you, we found Mr. Scott holding her in his arms, the knife still in her back, and blood on his hands. The verifier showed that he was telling the truth. There were two other women murdered. Did you kill Tara? I don't remember. Did you kill Lieutenant Tracy? I don't remember. Scotty. Accurate account. All that proves is that he's telling the truth when he, he... says he doesn't remember. Yeah. This is a waste of time. I think you can step down now, Mr. Scott. If there are no objections. I object to the entire procedure. Of course you do. We will cooperate. I do, however, reserve to myself the right to make the final determination. I'm okay with that. He seems like a trustworthy person, I think. Where were you at the time that Kara was murdered? Walking home, I, I assume. You've got to believe me, I wouldn't kill her. I couldn't. And she loved me. He might think she loved him, but she didn't. Did you kill Lieutenant Tracy? No. Did you kill Sibo? No. Subject relaying accurate account. All right, Mr. Morla, I think you can step down now. Mm hmm. It's either it's one of these two, the musician or the investigator guy. Let's assume that Sibo was a sensitive, that she did sense something, something evil. My poor Sibo's talent was genuine, gentlemen. But Scotty did also say that it was. It was inhuman. She said something else, words that didn't make any sense. Rajik, Baratis, Kaslak. Mr. Spock, check them out. Red Jack, Source, Earth, 19th century. Nickname for mass murderer of women, Jack the Ripper. Well, that's ridiculous. He lived hundreds of years ago. A man couldn't survive all these centuries. But maybe his spirit could. A hunger that never dies. But everything we've uncovered points to Jack the Ripper. There are entities possessed of extremely long lifespans, virtually immortal. But Sibo said that it feeds on death. We all feed on death, and vegetarians. Said it also feeds on fear. And Scotty's feeling a lot of fear. We have the prime suspect in our hands. Are we gonna let him go and start chasing ghosts? 
No, keep on with the investigation and shut your damn mouth. Could such an entity within discussed limits exist in this galaxy? There is sufficient precedent for existence of creature which could exist on emotion of fear. Entity would exist without form. Could the described entity assume physical form? Affirmative. Fairy tales, ghosts and goblins. I point out that Jack the Ripper slew at will in the heart of the most populous city of old Earth and was never identified. We all know the murderer is sitting right here with us. Please be seated, Mr. Hengist. Can you just fire him? Because didn't you hire him from off-world anyways? Get him out of here. It feeds on horror and fear. And I suspect preys on women because women are more easily and more deeply terrified. Cases of unsolved mass murders of women since Jack the Ripper. Shanghai, China, seven women knifed to death. 1974, USSR, five women, Martian colonies, Alpha, Eridani, two. All with a knife, all over the galaxy, all across time. When man moved out into the galaxy, that thing must have moved with him. Identify the proper names Kessler and Baratus. Baratus, name given to unidentified mass murderer of women on planet Rigel 4. You come from Rigel 4. Well, many people do. It's not a crime. Would you mind taking the stand, Mr. Hengist? Oh, I will not. Mr. Hengist. So he's possibly this entity's physical form? An entity which feeds on fear and terror would find a perfect hunting ground on Argelius, where the inhabitants are as peaceful as sheep. The entity would be as a hungry wolf. Gentlemen, I know something of the law. You're engaging in sheer speculation. I bet he knows a lot of things about the law. He's been around for a while. Composition of blade, Oridium. Artifact produced by hill people of Argus River region. Planet Rigel 4. Well, can't he just kind of... Wow, nice moves. can he just turn into gas and just fly away? He's dead, Jeff. How do you fight something like that? The computer will not respond to these controls. The entity is unquestionably controlling it. And the computer controls the ship. Oh, so the spirit of Jack the Ripper and all these other horrible murders is now controlling our ship. And this poor soul became like a, a vessel for the, that entity. We know it feeds on fear and terror. There are nearly 440 humans aboard this ship. All hands, this is the captain. Stay at your posts, remain calm. What's the sedative situation? Well, I've got some stuff that would tranquilize an active volcano. Good, start distribution immediately. So is Scotty in the clear, I guess? <laughs> but don't be scared. Free fall. Out of control. Put it on manual. That was due to be next. Life support malfunction. It wants terror, not just death. Die! Try and cut that thing off. <laughs> this is the first time I heard a malfunction threaten us. Man your post, Mr. Sulu. How do you get people to stay calm without being able to tell them exactly what's going on? First of all, Kirk has to stay calm, and he's doing a good job of it. If you destroy the ship, you destroy yourself. He's attempting to generate terror, Captain. Captain? Whoever he is, he sure talks gloomy. On your post, sir. <laughs> they all get some happy shots. I wouldn't be afraid of a supernova. <laughs> <laughs> Compute to the last digit the value of pi. Oh, no, 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 no. I should keep that thing busy for a while. Okay. With the power of pi. I wonder who it is we're not supposed to be afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir. I doubt very much whether the computers will be inhabited by more than a group of figures for a while. 
Complete computer control, Captain. The entity has fled. Bones, what would happen if that thing entered a tranquilized body? Well, it might take up knitting, nothing more violent than that. Better give yourself a shot, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> You got him. <laughs> die, 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 everybody. This is a strange episode. Deep space. Full power. Widest angle of dispersion. Would he die out in space? I mean, he probably doesn't need to. You didn't have to shove me, Mr. Spock. I'd have gotten round to it. We beamed it out into open space, Scotty. Widest possible dispersion. Oh, the thing can't die. Its consciousness may continue for some time, consisting of billions of separate bits of energy floating forever in space, powerless. Ah. Uh, okay. But a while later, I didn't know whether I was innocent or guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Bones, how long will it take for this tranquilizer to wear off? Oh, I don't know. Five or six hours. I gave him a pretty big shot, Jim. <laughs> well, Mrs. Spock, for the next five or six hours, we're going to have the happiest crew in space. Since you came to Argelius to rest. That's a splendid idea. Mr. Spock, this cafe has women that are so... He doesn't care. No, I guess not. <laughs> Alone? Gentlemen. <laughs> what a strange jumble of emotions in that episode. Hmm. Well, as many of you guys know, I do love a good mystery, a good murder mystery. One of my favorite parts of that episode, as I did mention before, was um, the acting from Scotty when he was at the mercy of this entity and the judicial system of the local inhabitants and that fear of not remembering so not knowing if he really was guilty somehow or not and what could happen to him and all these beautiful women just being murdered right nearby him was probably also just very traumatic whether or not he was um, a suspect or not would have been very upsetting. And I thought he did a great job portraying those emotions. I thought they did a pretty good job of making each of the three men, the two su other suspects and then the investigator guy to be um, suspicious. And so you didn't really know which one it was going to turn out to be in the end. But to have it be this kind of supernatural almost entity was not something that I saw coming. A very interesting twist. I was getting kind of the conscience of the king vibes a little bit, but it turned out to be something a lot more science fiction-y than that in the end. Now I have heard of the name Jack the Ripper, but I never really knew exactly the details so I just looked them up. It seems like Jack the Ripper was um, in the 1880s in London an unidentified serial killer who went after women and brutally brutally murdered them, pulled out their organs, just very heavy knife work. Um, definitely somebody who should be feared, who, who really kind of embodies that evilness, that rage, that madness. Because no sane person, I believe, would do something like that. And I think that kind of really heaviness of the kind of subject matter is maybe one of the reasons why they turn to such a light-hearted kind of conclusion. I mean, the conclusion itself wasn't lighthearted, but it had this kind of lighthearted flavor over it. 
because I think they would have probably felt that the episode was a little bit too dark, a little bit too depressing, a little bit too scary for audiences and would leave them feeling not great after watching the episode. And I don't think that's what they want necessarily. They like to end on that kind of lighter note. As we've discussed a lot of times, as you guys have mentioned in the comments quite a bit, Anyways, um, except for City on the Edge of Forever, that one, that one, uh, and, and Charlie, Charlie X are a couple that don't really have like a, a happy little twist at the end or whatever, but, um, this one definitely did. And maybe because the subject matter was just so, and pulling from real life events that happened that really terrorized uh people at a certain time and place in history then they wanted to really kind of maybe lighten the mood a little bit which i completely understand and it was fun to see <laughs> to see everybody just kind of laughing it was kind of nice um especially scotty especially after everything that he had been through but i feel like in five or six hours when all that wears off he's he's gonna be going through some emotions and really working out everything that happened. And even though he has been cleared, uh, still very, very traumatizing for poor Scotty here. And of course, lastly, Kirk finds a very creative way to overcome a problem that seems like it doesn't have any solution. How do you get rid of this entity that has been terrorizing people for centuries who can move across the galaxy who can at will just become this unphysical form and to transport it out to space with the highest spread so all the molecules and everything that makes up the body that the entity was inhabiting and while having that body be sedated so highly that it couldn't really get out or you know, escape in time and just to spread it out to where it could never be put back together was really neat. A very interesting way to use the transporter and it has some very scary implications as well. When you think about it, the person who is controlling the transporter settings at the time can very easily just murder somebody with the flip of a switch so the person who's in charge of that that's a very important job you want somebody that you can trust and that is very knowledgeable who isn't prone to making mistakes miscalculations things like that and I never thought of that position being so very important that the right person is there until now. Because, holy crap, they could just be like, you know what? I'm not really uh, fond of Captain Kirk. And maybe Captain Kirk did something to me or said something to me in the academy that I didn't like. And so I'm going to make it so that I can be a part of his crew. I get assimilated into the crew and I take that position and I just get rid of this Captain Kirk that's been a thorn in my side for my whole life because of some perceived like slight that he made against me or you know anything. I'm sure there are probably safety measures that are put in place so that maybe somebody couldn't do that very easily if they wanted to but there is a way and if somebody really wanted to do it they could get past all those safety measures they could do it i believe that they could anyways very very interesting episode lots of like a roller coaster of emotions lots of suspense and a good mystery a satisfying conclusion i liked it a lot hope you guys did as well what are your thoughts on this episode and everything that we've discussed hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time for the next episode, whatever that may be. All right, bye.